We exist and live in colour and so should our homes. From hints of blue in the interior to statement colours and layered design elements in the exterior, today's home leaves a lasting impression on all who visit. In today's episode of Finest Homes, we take a look at a modern home situated at the foothills of the Machalisberg. We chat to architect and homeowner Sonia Leitgerb of SL Architects about what inspired the design for her personal home. We also chat to her team that helped execute her vision. Hello, hello, Sonia. Hi, Tamila. How's it going? Good and you? Good. Thanks so much for having us. Thank I wanted to see what's inside. Come, come, right. come. <laughs> When Sonia and her husband set out to build their own home, they didn't yet have children. However, they had the foresight to prepare and plan for them in the future. Fast forward to today, they've created the perfect modern family home that evolves as their family grows up. So, starting with the outside, look at this gorgeous, gorgeous view. Oh. I have to say, Sonia, your home is absolutely beautiful. The grey charcoal and the combination with the wood, it's so stylish. And then it's obviously complemented with this beautiful, beautiful view. Yeah, the outside of the house really flows directly in yeah. with all the glass and all the doors. We've got everything just flowing straight through the outside of the house is actually almost so different from the house inside. It's two completely different elements. And yet it works so well. Yeah, I think the charcoal grey is actually an anthracite colour. It's supposed to be similar to what glass would be. It complements the floating principle of the home. We've got a lot of textures in the house, both interior and exterior. We've used the fiber cement boards, which is extremely low maintenance, and we've just treated it to look like timber. And then it just blends into the environment with all the greenery and all the natural materials. It's just distinctly South African. Now, Sonia, as an architect yourself, usually you get a brief from a client, but now this is your home. So what was your vision? This was my first challenge, designing a home for myself and my family. The brief actually came from my husband. He had specific requirements. And one of them was that he wanted to have a lot of natural light and a very spacious feeling. Not necessarily a large home, but he just wanted to feel like there's a lot of space. So one of the other priorities of this house was also privacy. We wanted to make sure that we had privacy from the street and also have a lot of open planned areas and interconnecting spaces for entertainment with all our family and all our friends. So it was a combination of elements that actually dictated the architecture of this home. Now, when I look around, there's so many nooks and crannies and moreover, levels. How did you achieve this? This was quite an interesting property that we started with. We had to actually blast the rock on the stand. There was so much rock and we ended up elevating the house slightly because of the rock that we couldn't excavate further. The slope of the house from the back to the front is almost four meters. It's the height of a house, single story house almost. And the angled lines of the existing property also inspired us for our angled lines on the house. You'll see there's a lot of distinctive features. A lot of the floating blocks have this angle that we've applied to. So it sounds like the slope was a bit of a challenge, but it created quite an opportunity because it resulted in this beautiful view. Yeah, it created an almost split level house of three levels. From the street, you have the impression that the house is three stories, but at no point are there actually three stories above each other. It's also allowed for us to separate certain functional spaces. Storage and garage is right at the bottom. Ground floor has all the public and living spaces. And then right at the top upstairs is our private bedroom area. This also allowed for a more interesting landscape where we've got terraced gardens and each little space is distinct and has its own little character and each having its own function. I'd like to talk a little bit about the shape of your home because it really is quite intriguing. What are the key influences that made it look this way? 
So the shape of the home is essentially a U-shape. It um, relates to the brief where we needed privacy. So on the street edge, it's quite a solid facade. And then towards the inside of the home, as you move through, we've created the U-shape that has the central courtyard where we have all our living spaces and all our entertainment is all internalized towards this courtyard. This essentially also opens up to the northern exposure, allowing for a lot of natural light into the home, but also into our entertainment area and garden. And although we're on the ground floor, from this side of the home, it seems like neighbors can't peer through and have a little sneak peek. This was the advantage of the initial challenge that we had with a rock that we had to try and blast out. It elevated the house, which allowed for more privacy for us up here. So neighbors and people walking down below can't really peek into our house up here. And also it lends again to the floating elements of the home where our pool floats over the edge. Well, I think I've had a good look at what's happening on the exterior. I cannot wait to see what you've done on the inside. Let's go. Let's take a look. After the break, we explore the interior of this modern family home. In today's episode of Finest Homes, we're exploring a modern family home situated at the foothills of the Michalisberg. Before the break, we chatted to architect and homeowner Sonia Leitgerb of SL Architects about what inspired the design for this modern family home. And now we get to explore the interior. Look at this spectacular home. And let me tell you something, it's not just because we're on the inside, but your home feels so warm and livable. How did you achieve this with this kind of layout? This was the intention to have a nice homey feel. So we have the living spaces that's quite open and spacious and we've got the large doors that open up onto our outdoor entertainment and patio areas. At the entrance we have our entrance foyer which is separate from our open plan living areas. We've got a screen wall that divides the two spaces although we have the continuous flow around the entrance foyer into the living area. We have our living area and our dining and our kitchen all open, but there's clear transition spaces between each one. So each space is well defined and these open spaces then extend further out to the courtyard. Because we have the U-shaped house, everything opens up in towards the middle. So from the kitchen, we get to have a view of the open plan living areas and everything just flows out and almost radiates from the kitchen actually onto our patio and our pool area. We've got a great view of the outside. We can keep an eye on the kids. We know exactly where they are. And even around the corners, we can keep an eye on everything from our kitchen. It's an open plan and continuous flow all the way. And then you've got this beautiful natural light coming through from the side of the home. Yeah, this was one of the most important key features of this home. We needed to have a lot of natural light and the sense of space. And Sonia, I see you've used specific features to kind of set out areas in your home. We have this bulkhead, the white bulkhead, which protrudes distinctly from the gray off shutter concrete ceiling. It's a distinctly industrial element, although in this space it does give warmth. So it defines the dining space quite nicely and it's also where we have our feature lights and our industrial fan defining the space quite nicely. We also have with our living area, we have our timber pallet feature wall with also the industrial fireplace. So it creates this space in the living area also to be well defined from the rest. I love how you've used materials to kind of play a functional role in your home as well as one that creates a feel, a look and feel. For example, this beautiful wall that I have on my right. Talk to me about that. It's quite a special wall yeah. actually. It's a recycled timber pallets which we used. It's something that my husband actually got from a depot that he works from. It's also in our home, it's our family wall. So it's got quite a special connection and it's a wall that's also ever changing. You can just stick nails in, move, add extra pictures, take out. It's a special feature in our home and it's the first thing you see when you walk in. 
Well, I must say the first thing that I definitely noticed when I walked in was that gap between the wall and the ceiling. Talk to us about why that exists. So it is a feature and a principle that we've applied to the entire architecture of the home, on the exterior and on the interior. We wanted to create an impression of the first floor that floats over the ground floor. It mimics the same principle that we've done on the exterior architecture, where we have these large masses hanging over the patio area. And even with our pool, we have an infinity pool, so you kind of feel like you're floating above the trees and we've applied it to the interior similarly. So it looks like the first floor is floating over the ground where we've allowed for the little gaps between the entrance foyer and the more private living space. And then even in our joinery and our cupboards, we have the gaps between the top and the ceiling. And this is all intentional just to allow for that floating feel. The other elements that we also have that's similar between the inside and the outside is the materials and the textures. We've gone for natural materials. We've got the uh, off-shutter concrete ceilings inside and out. We've used the timber cladding on the inside walls as our feature and then on the outside with the timber imitation cladding. Sonia, upstairs looks like so much fun. It looks like a sanctuary for kids to play in. Talk to me about the layout and how you created that space. Mm. Well, we actually designed our home before we had kids. And um, although we, we accommodate for a lot of our family and nieces and nephews, there's a lot of kids in our family. So we wanted to have a space where the kids could play and enjoy themselves. And then the adults could also just be downstairs without too much noise. And this house has actually just evolved. We now have a little girl. Um, it even radiates to our exterior and our landscaping where she's had an influence. Our garden is actually terraced and it almost creates a different play yard area for her on different areas. She's got a jungle gym on the one side, she's got a little mud kitchen on the other. She just enjoys our house from the top to the bottom. So what would you say is your favorite part of the home? I think this living area and the open plan is definitely one of our favorites. We cook a lot, we have a lot of family and we have a lot of friends that visit and it's also open up onto the outside and we have an amazing view of the hills and valleys and greenery. This is definitely one of our favorite spaces. As the views of paramount importance, the first floor bedrooms also have large full width and corner windows opening onto the mountain range. Colour plays a major role in the finishing of this home. Therefore, Sonia brought in the expertise of colour specialist Rosa Diaga to help select the right colours for the home. Rosa, this is such a lovely home and a great canvas to work from. What was the vision for the overall kind of look and feel of the colour scheme? So we needed to highlight the modern contemporary look that Sonia wanted for her home, uh, both exterior highlighting the architectural features and then on the interior as side of things, bringing in warmth but simpleness to highlight her little quirks that she has in the home. Rosa, can you talk to us a little bit about the importance and role of colour in the overall home design? Colour is critical. Um, not everybody thinks so and a lot of people don't place a great importance on it but for me it is what is going to finish off the design and give you the desired look so in Sonia's house we have the exterior features to consider and what type of color to accentuate those and similarly interior so in this particular home, what were your key considerations for colour, both in the exterior and the interior? So let's start with the exterior. Sonia's got these lovely new tech board features, so that wooden look. It's not a square looking house. It's got a lot of angles and designs, so you want to emphasize those in the right way. So a lighter color is going to brighten up areas and a darker color is going to give you a big emphasis on it. And in choosing the light gray and the very dark gray charcoal color, that's what we did and painted them in areas that's going to highlight the features. Now, when you look around this home, there's so many textures that you can see. How do the colors all work together with those textures? 
that was extremely important to look at and make sure that everything linked together. So having the wooden wall for the family photos, we needed to complement the concrete slab of the ceiling and the tiles with the wall colour. Because if that created a complete picture and worked, then the other two could link in. So in choosing a colour for this house, we wanted it to be as light as possible because the concrete ceiling and the tiles are grey and fairly dark. So you don't want to detract from that, you want to highlight it. So as light as possible and hence the choice of the very light grey colour chosen. And then to Mello, we brought in a blue, sky blue type colour which links very well with the greys. It creates a calmness. It, it blends in with the lovely pendants, with the wallpaper design, and it works all together. When, you, when you're using a grey colour, there are certain colours that are going to match, and it also comes down to a client's personal preference and their tastes. So they like the calmness of the blue, and it matches up with the light grey, and hence the choice of that colour. What would you say are some of the key guidelines when it comes to selecting the right colours for your home? Firstly, there's an exterior and an interior consideration when I say keep it neutral and keep it simple. Um, so from an exterior per perspective, keep it simple in that you don't want to bring in too many colours that's going to detract from the features of the home. So if the architectural design is, is a very plain, simple block type design, then bring in a few colours so that you can highlight. In this particular home, there are so many features already, so you don't want to bring in too many colours, you want to keep it simple. Similarly, in the interior, you don't want to go with four or five different colours. Um, light plays such a big role, so one colour throughout the home can look so different in different rooms. And when you keep it neutral and simple, it works and it emphasises the features of the home. Another very important tip for people to consider when choosing colour is that they believe that choosing a dark colour for their home on the exterior is going to hide away the dirt and hide away any imperfections. Actually, that is the exact opposite of choosing a dark colour. The dark colour is going to highlight the dirt, it's going to highlight the imperfections. A light colour is actually going to be more forgiving. And the reason for that is because it reflects the light better than what a dark colour does. The next thing that's critically important is that clients need to understand the, the undertones of a colour. So when they go and look at a colour palette, you've got a clear blues, you've got the yellows and the greens. So if they don't like a yellow undertone, then steer away from those colour palettes and choose something that they do like. That's critically important. The next tip is that once you've chosen a colour from a colour card or you've gone to another house and you've loved that colour in that house, always get a sample. It is so important for the client to test it in their environment, in their home, in their lighting because it all differs. And whilst this is a north facing house, their home might be south facing, they don't get as much light and therefore the colour will look completely different. So that is a, a tip that's actually a must and must never be forgotten because you want to make sure you choose the right colour at the end of the day. Although colour plays a vital role in the makeup of this home, it was never intended to be noticed, but rather the home's neutral palette allows the surrounding view to enjoy centre stage. With the home perceived to have three levels, Sonia wanted a powerful welcoming entrance to the home, and nothing says welcome like a beautifully designed and manicured front garden. Sonia leaned on the vision of landscape technologist Denton Bronkhurst to get the job done. So Denton, we're actually standing in front of the home and I love how this garden perfectly wraps the entrance of the home and is probably a perfect intro to the garden inside. Yes, it's, it's very important, especially when I sat down with Sonia, she wanted a, a statement in the front. I think that's always when you walk into your home, the first thing you see is the front garden. So this had to take in a lot of thinking, you can almost say, to sit down and create an effect that when you walk past or you drive past, you're walking, you feel, wow, 
and it's, it has to suit the style of the house. So there was a lot of thought process going into here, especially with the, the difficulty of the slope, but I think everything came well together. <laughs> Another element that, 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 that's quite important of this garden, it's self-sustainable to an extent. Whereas a lot of the succulents, you can actually take them, if there's a dry spot or an open spot or something, you can literally just break it apart and you can replant it. And so just continually getting into the garden and just giving it more oomph, you can almost say. What was the vision for the landscaping? The vision went more into the direction of a self-sustainable water-wise garden almost simplistic, that fits the whole style of the house. We've got a very robust style huh, going there. So if you look at it, there's a lot of wood elements, there's a lot of glass elements, concrete, all those things coming together. So we had to focus on getting a, a type of a garden that suits this building and doesn't just necessarily break it into pieces. You want everything working together in a holistic type. That sounds like low maintenance, which is exactly my kind of garden. <laughs> How did you go about executing it? We decided on going with a lot of the different succulents and aloes, bringing those elements in. An uh, important part of the, the succulents is you don't get lots of flower colour in summer, with a couple of exceptions to some of the plants. So we need to focus a lot on your foliage colours coming through. We also made use of a lot of the natural stones that actually came out of the building sites. Uh, you'll see we used it to such an extent due to the slopes so as to control the erosion a bit. Another important feature of the garden is, especially if you're working with succulents, your smaller type of plants, not to start planting them separately. You need to make small groupings of different plants. Uh, you play around with a lot of textures, a lot of foliage colours coming through, and here and there you'll always find a spot of a different colour coming through. Also need to keep in mind your different heights, a lot of elements that went into the garden. It sounds like the slope could have posed a few challenges, but it actually came out as an opportunity. Definitely. I think an important thing of a lot of gardens is playing around with different heights. Sometimes a lot of people, you've, you've got a, a fair, fairly level ground, which makes it a bit difficult. Then you not need to start incorporating different heights, either by using pots or building planters and so on. So this actually created a lovely opportunity of, of creating those different heights and then also incorporating the different plants to such an extent that you can actually view it from the front, you can view it from the top, wherever you're standing, you're seeing a lot of it. Job well done. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Don't go away. After the break, we show you how to achieve this look at home. In today's episode of Finest Homes, we explored a modern home situated at the foothills of the Michalisberg. Before the break, we chatted to architect and homeowner Sonia Leitgerb about what inspired the design of her personal home. Up next, we'll give you a few tips and tricks on how to get this look at home. Today's home displayed its plank panelling proudly. And let's be honest, it doesn't take much to tip the timber scale, but with the right selection of colour and texture, we dodged the hardwood horror show and instead saw a fabulously rustic rest haven. And Tabby, in this episode, we went balls to the walls, and I mean that quite literally, with the rustic warm wood and the moody blues and greys. And did you see that texture on that hanging light? I love it. I love that introduction of something soft and feminine in this wall that is so masculine, yet it brings through all the colours that we need, the shades of blues, the camels, the browns, that just link up to this reclaimed wall display. And I loved the various selection of woods used here, right? Mm -hmm. You almost have an endless array of options, right? Mm -hmm. You've got pine, you've got barnwood, you've got oak. What are the guidelines there to ensure that we have the nice combination? Reclaimed wood, anything goes. Anything can go that you can create this found, this sourced piece, this artistic haven interpretation as opposed to a perfect piece of plank. And it was so complimentary to, I mean, once you entered the home, you kind of saw the beautiful staircase and the wooden wall and those kind of, those elements worked very well together. I see that you put this together for us on here to kind of replicate. Yes, I did. Obviously, again, what I loved was just how they dealt with the balustrade using rope because you've got wood, you've got rope, you've got cement, you're working with all those elements that make the house come alive. Now, for anyone else who is walking into the room right at that moment, Hearing wood, steel, cement, rope, you might think it's a bit industrial, but not at all. And that was warmed up with the plants that almost felt like they were growing out from the wood, really. That the wood almost was the sand and there yeah. was water beneath there forming this creation. And it's so beautiful to, to add those textures, wood, cement, plants. 
The decal on the wall above the TV, what a beautiful touch. And it's just, again, adding a touch of nature into this very industrial outlook, but softening it with elements such as children's artwork, the felt hearts. It all just creates a harmonious interior for us to enjoy this family home. So if I'm trying to achieve this look, what are my top three tips? Wooden plank on the walls. If you don't have, there's a lovely wallpaper interpretation that you can go for. The leather, obviously, on your corner suite is a lovely touch as well. And then the greys and the blues in your fabric and colour selection, just so that you tie back to that reclaimed wood feel. Well, all I have to say to this is drop your paintbrushes. Wood panelling is officially cool again. Confirmed. By taking the visual landscape and combining clever architectural features with clean line design, Sonia has created a symbiotic interplay with nature and a comfy lifestyle that makes the perfect home for her and her family. This truly is a finest home.